Good morning, uh, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge O Levels Physics 5054. In this video, we are going to attempt some MCQs, and they are on the topic of space physics. These are practice questions issued by the Cambridge O Levels uh, to guide the students uh, so they have a little idea that what kind of questions are coming from the topic space physics. The purpose of this booklet is to provide additional practice questions and answers for the space physics topic, which has been introduced to Cambridge O-Level Physics 5054 for first assessment in 2023. Practice questions have been provided to exemplify a range of type of questions which could appear in examinations. The answers and a typical mark scheme are also provided. So let's start. Uh, we have eight MCQs available uh, with us. And let's do that. So this is that booklet which has been issued. And I'm going to use this booklet. I will also upload the link of this booklet in the description of this video. I have also uploaded the link of this booklet in my community post. And you can download that from there. So this is the question which are coming. So let's attempt the first MCQ. So on your screen, the first MCQ is coming. He says, which row in the table correctly lists a galaxy, a planet, and a star? So uh, here, if you look at the Milky Way is the galaxy, Mars, Earth, they are the, the planets. Okay, they are. that's right. So the galaxy is Milky Way, the planet is Mars and Earth, both are planets. So the choice is between A and B. Star, the moon is not a star. Sun is a star. So I think uh, B is the right answer. So I think that B will be the right answer. So B is the right answer. So let's check. Question number one, B is the right answer, sir. Okay, so question number uh, two. The orbital, the orbit around the sun of a comet is not circular. The distance between the sun and the comet varies as shown in the diagram. Where in the orbit is the speed of the comet the greatest and where is it the smallest? Okay, so when the comet <clears throat> moves around the sun, this comet is moving around the sun in this manner. Okay, so this is, it is moving like this. And this shape is called elliptic. This is not circular. This is elliptic. This point and this point is known as the focus of the ellip or elliptical shape. <clears throat> the sun is on one of the focuses. And... When the comet is nearest the sun, when, for example, when the comet is here, its speed is fastest. And when it is furthest, its speed is slowest. So as the comet is orbiting the sun, when it comes here, the speed is fastest. And when it is here, its speed is slowest. So as the orbit will be rotating from P to Q, from Q to R, the speed will be increasing, increasing, increasing. And, okay, let's let's look at what's the question. Where in the orbit is the speed of the comet the greatest and where is, is it the smallest? The speed will be greatest when the comet is nearest the sun. So that will be R position. And where it will be slowest? When it is furthest from the sun. So that will be the P position. So the options are the speed greatest at the R and the speed smallest at the P. So I think B, D is the answer. Question number two. Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole question. Okay, now I think you can see the question number two, the whole question. The greatest speed will be at R position and the speed smallest will be at the P position. 
So I think D is the right option, sir. Question number two, D is the right option. Okay, so we are going to the next question. The next question is question number three. He says the orbit around the sun of a particular asteroid dwarf planet is not circular. The distance between the sun and the asteroid varies as shown in the diagram. The asteroid possesses both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Which energy transfer takes place as the asteroid moves from X to Y and as it moves from Y to Z? So basically what is happening, we have an asteroid and asteroid is rotating like this. And this orbit of the asteroid is not circular. It is elliptical. So because it's elliptical, so the sun is on one of the focuses of the elliptic. The one focus is here, the other focus is here. On this focus, we have the sun. So when the asteroid is rotating around the sun, here the asteroid is nearest to the sun. And here the asteroid is furthest. When it is nearest to the sun, the speed is fastest. So here the kinetic energy will be maximum. When the asteroid is furthest, the speed is slowest. So the kinetic energy will be lowest. So as the asteroid is rotating like this, it's moving from X to Y, from Y to Z. So it is coming near the sun. So gradually the speed of the asteroid is increasing. So that's why gradually the kinetic energy is increasing. Here at this point, at the furthest point, the gravitational potential energy will be maximum. And as it moves from X to Y, its gravitational potential energy will decrease and it will convert into the kinetic energy. And as it will move from Y to Z further, the gravitational potential energy will convert into the kinetic energy because its speed is gradually increasing. So as it will move from X to Y, the gravitational potential energy will convert into kinetic energy. And as it will move from Y to Z further, the gravitational potential energy will convert into the kinetic energy. So their question is, which energy transfer takes place as the asteroid moves from X to Y and as it is as it moves from Y to Z? So uh, I think that uh, when it will be moving from X to Y, the gravitational potential energy will be converting into the kinetic energy. And as it will move from Y to Z, the gravitational potential energy further will be converting into the kinetic energy. I think A is the choice. Let's check question number three. A is the right choice, sir. And I hope you understand this. Okay, so we are going to the next question. And the next question coming up on your screen is question number four. Cerus and Vesta are two asteroids dwarf planets that orbit the sun. The orbits of Cerus and Vesta are approximately circular. The sun's gravitational field at the orbit of the Cerus is weaker and then that at the orbit of Vesta. So because the, the gravitational field is weakest, the gravitational field is weakest at, uh, the gravitational field at the orbit of Cerus is weaker, underline this word, as compared to the Vesta, it means it is the farthest. It is farthest. It is far as compared to the, and it is near the sun. Okay. Because the gravitational field uh, on the, uh, at the orbit of the Saros is weaker, and it, the, this shows that it is further away from the, uh, from the sun as compared to the Vesta. How does the orbital speed of Saros and its orbital period 
compare with the orbital speed and orbital period of Vesta. So uh, the orbital speed of Ceres because it is far furthest away, further away. So its orbital speed will be slow. Its orbital speed will be uh, slow. It will be the speed will be less because its orbit will be larger. And uh, orbital period of the Saros, uh, it will become uh, greater because its orbit is, is larger than the Vesta. So its speed in the orbit will be slower and it will take longer time to complete that orbit. So it will, the orbital period of the Saros will be greater than the Vesta. So I think the smaller than that of the Vesta, the orbital speed of Saros, because it's further away, it will be, uh, orbital speed will be smaller, but uh, the time taken to complete that orbit will be uh, greater than Vesta. So why we, we, we came to this conclusion? Because the Saros is, is, is further away from the sun as compared to Vesta. So its speed will be slow and its orbital period will be uh, uh, larger as compared to Vesta. So question number four, I think B is the choice. Question number four, B is the right choice, sir. Okay, then we have question number five. The sun emits energy. The sun emits the energy and... Uh, the sun emits the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Which three components of the electromagnetic spectrum account for almost all of this energy? The energy, uh, electromagnetic radiation, which is coming out of uh, the sun, and that is mostly in the form of infrared, ultraviolet, and visible light. That's a fact. So most of them are infrared, ultraviolet, and visible light. So I think, uh, oh my God, C is the right choice. Sir. By mistake, I have highlighted something different. So I think C is the right choice. Question number five, C is the right choice. Yeah. C is the right choice. And then we have question number six. When in the life cycle of a star are heavy elements produced? This happens at, at the, not at the, exactly the end, but before the last stages of the star, the life cycle of a star, you know, when all the hydrogen and hydrogen has fused and formed helium, and then the helium fuse, and they make beryllium, and then they fuse to make um, more heavy elements. So uh, this happens when the fuel, the basic fuel of hydrogen has been consumed. So when this happens, when a red super giant explodes, I think. Uh, when a cloud containing hydrogen collapses, no, that's the start of uh, the, the start of the life cycle of a star. When a protostar becomes stable, that is the second stage of the life cycle. Uh, when a red supergiant explodes, that is the right answer, sir, I think. I think this is the answer. When a white dwarf is formed, this is the last stage. And this do not happen at the last stage. It happens when a supergiant explodes. Heavy elements are produced. Uh, let's see. Question number six. C is the right choice. Our answer is right. Question number seven. The statements J, K, L, and M describe different stages in the life cycle of a small star. J is a cloud containing hydrogen collapses due to gravitational attraction. So uh, a red giant is produced. A white dwarf is produced. Hydrogen undergoes nuclear fusion to produce helium. So what is the order uh, first to last in, in which the stages occur? The first stage which happens is a cloud containing hydrogen collapses due to gravitational attraction. So the J will happen 
first. Then uh, hydrogen undergoes nuclear fusion to produce helium. So this stage will happen. Then uh, a red joint is produced. So then this will happen, the K. And then the hydrogen undergoes, uh, sorry, a white dwarf is produced. That's the last stage. Okay. So it the, the life cycle, uh, the order will be J, M, K, L. So I think J, M, K, L. So I think A is the right answer, sir. So I think A is the right answer. Let's check A, question number seven. A is the right answer, sir. Then it says, what provides evidence for the Big Bang Theory? So how do we know the Big Bang Theory ha um, uh, Big Bang happened? Uh, because the radiation which is coming from the far away galaxies, that radiation is showing a redshift. The further the galaxy is, the more redshift it shows, which means the the wavelength of the light which is coming from furthest galaxies, from the galaxies far away, its wavelength is more as compared to the light which is coming from the galaxies and the stars which are near our solar system. So, um, so, so from there we are concluding that uh, uh, the, the galaxies which are further away, they have more redshift in them. And the galaxies which are near to our galaxy, they have less redshift. So from here, we know that at some point, the, this, this whole universe is expanding. So the galaxies are moving away from each other. So that from there, it supports the idea that if we go back, if we go in reverse direction in the time, so at some time, these all things were together and a big bang happened and they have spread in all the universe. So how do we have this? The expul expulsion, expulsion of heavy elements into space during a supernova explosion? No. The increase in the observed wavelength of radiation, this is called redshift, and emitted by distant galaxies. Yes, this is the right answer. This is the proof for the big bang Theory. The nuclear fusion reaction uh, that takes place at the center of the stable stars know the smaller orbital speeds of the planets that are further from the sun No. So B is the right choice. Question number eight, B is the right choice and our answer is right. So here we have the answers uh, for this and there were eight questions issued by the Cambridge on the topic of the uh, then we have uh, theoretical uh, structured questions. I will make another video on the structured questions. And I hope that this video will help you. Uh, this video will help you uh, to prepare MCQs related with the topic of the space physics. And uh, if you find this video useful, interesting, and you think that this video can help, can help you, your teacher, or your class fellows, your senior students, your junior students. Please like this video. Please share the link of this video onto your Facebook, onto your Instagram, and onto your Twitter accounts. You can find this file, uh, this document, uh, in my community post. And I will also share the link of this uh, document uh, in my in the description of this video. I think it's a great blessing for me that I can make these videos which can touch the life of so many students around the globe. Thank you very much for taking our time and watching this video. Have a good day. God bless you all.